Now, ABC6 News continues with Walter Cryan and April O'Dell. Not too many people take day trips to Block Island this time of year, so we sent ABC6 reporter Julie Radiski to find out what island life is like in the winter. And thanks to Mother Nature, her assignment took a lot longer than expected. As soon as we arrived on Block Island, we wanted to catch all the sights. Jim, the taxi driver, offered us a tour. I enjoy the peacefulness. I love to be here. Um, it's the island is beautiful. 40% of Block Island is protected land. Rolling hills, lighthouses, old New England charm. It is beautiful, but bare. In the summer, there's nearly 20,000 visitors a day. Only 900 people stay year round. It's all locals in the winter time, so it's it's really nice because you know everybody, you know what they're going to order, you know where they're going to sit, so you can have whatever they want to drink. There's a limited number of hotels, limited number of bed and breakfast is available, and the day trippers again will be, uh, the numbers will be totally dependent on what the weather uh, situation is. And the weather here always seems to change. It did for us. The wind picked up, the clouds rolled in. It was time for our day trip to end. Hi, we're here for the 6.30 ferry. I'm sorry, the 6.30 ferry is actually canceled. Oh, why? Due to the high winds, they're supposed to gust over 40. So there's no other ferries on? Nothing. <laughs> the next ferry is 2.30 tomorrow. Okay, well, we are officially stuck at Blug Island. We have a hotel, so now we need to find something to do. And everyone here seems to hang out with their friends during the winter months. So we're going to go surprise my friend Erin. This is her house. We're stranded. So where does everybody go at night? Club Soda. They have food and a full bar. And that would be basically the place where you can get everything you need. R to the Albion. Because those are basically the only two places that are open. At the Albion, we found plenty of locals. In summertime, we have, you know, as much excitement as you want. In the wintertime, you get to decompress from that and uh, have some quiet time. A few seats over from Maddox, we find Peter Gemp. He works for the phone company here and is a town volunteer. Gemp says in recent years, more people have wanted to move to this quaint place, causing real estate prices to soar. Developers looking to build are often met with resistance from environmentalists who want to preserve untouched land. Today, there's only 1,600 homes here, many once worth only a few hundred thousand dollars 10 years ago, now go for at least a million, including his. There's people, including myself, that could probably sell our property and never work again, but then you can't come back because the real estate prices are so extremely high. Never do that. I love this place way too much. After talking to some natives, it was time for a bite to eat. So goodbye, Halo. Pizza? All right. Good job. <laughs> At dinner, I realized there is a bit of life here in the dead of winter. <laughs> it was then lights out. The next day, the purple flag was flying again. No ferry, and only one other option. Now that's, it's going to be the rockiest just after we take off and just before we land. We took off for a bumpy 12-mile ride to Westerly Airport. Goodbye, Block Island. We'll be back, but maybe in the summer. Julie Ruditsky, ABC 6 News. Mm, looks like a fun detour, though. Chief Meteorologist Mark Searles is back. Mark, it's that weather. It really is. That's a great view, though. Wasn't that flying out of Block Island? Wow, crazy weather. Absolutely on the block. They get it year-round. And uh, getting it right now, can't escape the Arctic air April that's coming back into southern New England.